First up, we have Apple's use of Swift and Swift UI in iOS 16 by Alexander Kalushi. Now he does this article every year and I feature it every year because it's always so interesting to see like what Apple's using and how things are evolving and how like how much Swift is picking up speed, how much Swift UI is picking up speed. Now, two things I want to point out before we dive in. Anytime you see something like this, you should always reach into the methodology to see how they figured that out because we all know you can make stats say whatever you want. So Alexander is very open with the methodology. You can dive in. The other thing I want to point out, he says, you should take this with a grain of salt. He believes the overall picture to be accurate. Like his approach just has limitations because, you know, he's not at Apple. He doesn't have access to all this stuff. But he's studying the number of binaries, you know, that have Swift or Swift UI. So if we scroll down to look at um, some comparisons here with Swift and Swift UI, first of all, he does say during the platform state of the union, like Apple's making it very clear where they're going. It's going to take some time to get there, but they say the best way to build an app is with Swift and Swift UI. Like they plastered that all over WWDC. And you can see in the study that Swift and Swift UI adoption is slowly creeping up over Objective-C and UI Kit. Don't take this the wrong way. I'm not saying Objective-C and UI Kit are useless. Don't do that. But one of the most common questions beginners have is which one should I learn? I believe you can make both work. If you want to go all in on UI Kit, that's fine. You want to go on Swift UI, both will work. But here's just some data on where things are going uh, with Swift and Swift UI. So a number of binaries using Swift and Swift UI, you can see over the iOS versions, it is definitely ramping up. And here's some, you know, frameworks that are using it, FaceTime, batteries, health, podcasts. So it's picking up steam is the, the sum here. And again, dive into this stuff uh, if you like. I want to go here because, right, UI kit versus Swift UI, right? Because not all these binaries have a UI element to it. So comparing only the binaries that have UI is a more fair way to do it. So as you can see, the number of binaries are growing as like, you know, Apple builds new things. So viewing it as a percentage is a nice way to do it. So you can see Swift UI is still, you know, 3% in iOS 14, 7% in iOS 15, 13%, but you can, you can see the trend, right? Where are we going to be in three, three to five years here? So like I said, I love that Alexander puts this out every year. I always like looking at it just to see how, how things are evolving. Next up, Apple put out a spotlight on the dynamic island highlighting some independent app developers and their use of, you know, live activities, dynamic island, all that stuff. So I want to share this for inspiration for you if you're building your own app with dynamic island and live activities, right? So we have a city map app. You can kind of see their designs and what they're thinking. We have uh, Christian Selig here of Apollo showing how you can follow a Reddit thread in the expanded view of a dynamic island. I'm curious why they didn't feature Pixel Pals because that seemed to be a big hit. Maybe they have a reason. Maybe maybe they're like, eh, that's not how you're supposed to use that. I don't know. They're a big hit though. People seem to love them. So uh, anyway, just inspiration for your dynamic island UI or how you could use this for your app. If you need more inspiration, I just released the update to my widget kit course that features dynamic island live activities. You can see we build a little basketball game simulator. So if you want to learn how to build that, check that out, seanallen.teachable.com. Moving on, we have the macOS Ventura Mac Stories review. So there's always the big iOS 16 Mac Stories review every year. This is the macOS Ventura version of it. So again, super thorough, going through all the new features. If you're a user of macOS Ventura, definitely recommend checking this out so you can see all the new stuff. And as a developer, maybe it'll give you an idea for, for a Mac app. But I'll scroll through this real quick. This first section is all about Stage Manager, how that's being used. You dive into that. All right, I'm gonna scroll to the bottom real quick because this is all stage manager stuff. Just to show you how this works, at the bottom there'll be multiple pages here. Yes, so if you go to page three, now this is gonna be all about community and collaboration. And they start off with the continuity camera, how you can put your iPhone up now and like use that as a uh, webcam, which is much better than the built-in webcam. So anyway, if you wanna learn all about the new Mac OS Ventura, this is definitely an amazing resource to check out. Next up, we have Swift concurrency, the things they don't tell you. Swift concurrency is a new hotness. It's gotten rave reviews. I've heard like nothing but good things. But as always with everything in programming, there's trade-offs, nothing is perfect. So I think this article does a great job of showing you, you know, the things that aren't so perfect before you just blindly jump in. I'm not saying you shouldn't adopt Swift concurrency. You just know the trade-offs. So now I haven't taken the deep dive into Swift concurrency yet. I've converted my network calls to async await and done some basic cloud kit calls with async await. So I know like the basics, but I haven't taken the deep dive just for the context on why I may be like breezing over some of this stuff. So, you know, there's a the basic problems with async await and if you scroll down, it kind of points out some major points in the headings I'm going to show off like actor, the silent assassin of your code. Okay. If that doesn't make you want to read. <laughs> All right. And, uh, down here, one more, I think another section here. Yeah. Task, the hidden bottlenecks. So again, I'm not saying Swift concurrency is bad. I don't believe he is either, but uh, you just gotta know the trade-offs and the pros and cons of using these uh, solutions. 
We all wish we could travel the world and go to every conference, but you know what? That's not possible. But NS Spain X just put up their, uh, the 22 version of their conference, all of their video talks. So it's kind of like you went there, right? You know, the composable architecture, accessibility, designing powerful APIs with progressive disclosure. I believe there's probably like 15 to 20 ish talks here. If you see a subject you like, go ahead and click on it, but they're all about a half hour. It's kind of like you went to the conference. You got to see all the talks, all the knowledge being shared. I think it's great. You know, lessons learned rewriting SoundCloud in Swift UI. That might be pretty cool. How to choose a branching strategy. So, anyway, lots of interesting stuff there at the NS Bain conference. Now you get to see all the videos. Holly Bora, an engineer on the Swift compiler team at Apple, has some great advice for junior developers. Like, there are plenty of ways to stand out as a junior engineer without taking a backseat. A few that worked for me. Right, when you're faced with an unfamiliar problem, break it down into smaller problems. Uh, another one I liked here that she, she said here, uh, use the skills you know to investigate and debug. Ask deliberate questions when you reach your limit. She's talking about asking, you know, you're, you're a senior engineer on your team or somebody to help you out. And this is key, right? Uh, knowing how to ask for help goes a such a long way. So like include what you've already tried, why those approaches didn't work and the things you encountered. So again, learning how to ask for help of your, your teammates is, is super important. Don't just go up to them and be like, fix this. <laughs> like you gotta give them all the context, what you've tried, what worked, what didn't work, what, some of your ideas on what you think might be the problem. There's a lot of good ways to go about asking for help. Well, we'll do one more before like uh, moving on. I uh, like this one, write down your approach to a problem before diving into the implementation. And I like this, ask for feedback on your approach from others on the team. That's such a huge thing because if your approach is all wrong or how you're going about the problem is all wrong, wow, you're setting yourself up for failure. So if you can get feedback on your approach and make sure, you know, you may not solve the problem, but if at least you're approaching the problem the right way, I think that goes a long way as well. So anyway, great thread by Holly here. Definitely check it out. Next, we have Jordan Morgan on building things and raising children. So this is all about, you know, yeah, you have your full-time job and your, your family raising kids. Well, how do you squeeze in, you know, building an app on the side, speaking at conferences, going to conferences, writing a book? And this is a really good article. If you have children, highly recommend diving into it. He gives all his backstory and how he does things. I'm gonna go to the summary. So, you know, you definitely check this out for yourself, but we'll do the, the summary to review that. Okay, to recap, make sure you have your life priorities straight. Obviously the kids and the families come first. Make some small habits that help yourself work on stuff. Don't compare your output to other people, right? They have more time. Consider if you really want to take on a side project or you just like the idea of it. Um, there's more, but I want to really go away with this line right here. If you're a parent, realize this. We've got a lot of time to build products. We don't have a lot of time to raise children. I think that's the key thing here. If you spend a lot of your time building these side projects now, you may regret it later in life as your kids you know, get older and older and you, you, you want that time back. So this is really the line I wanted to leave you with. But if you are in that situation trying to build extra stuff while raising kids, I think this is an awesome article to read. I've shared this before, but I want to share it again. I love it so much. I'm not sure if Flavio was the original poster of this, but anyway, they tweeted it out right now. But over time, this is like the programmer's journey. The beginner programmer writes super simple code. Then they learn object-oriented programming everywhere and design patterns. And then basically they get like too smart for their own good, <laughs> right? Uh, might need this later. Perfect abstractions. What is the best architecture? And then it's like over time, as you get more senior, more experience, you've kind of have the horror stories to go back on of bringing in the wrong abstraction or working with the wrong third-party library, all that stuff. Then you kind of just learn like, yeah, just super simple code is the way to go. But it's just that that funny path that I think almost all engineers take. All right, now we got average subscription renewal rates by app category from Revenue Cat. So they did a article, I think I featured it last month, about uh, renewal rates from 10,000 apps on iOS and Android, you know, for various subscription lengths, like annual subscriptions, weekly subscriptions, monthly subscriptions. H how do those renew? Well, the feedback they got was, okay, cool. How does that change across categories? So that's what we got here, some of these charts here. So you have health and fitness, education, productivity, photo and video, lifestyle. And you can see the range of renewal rates. This first one is for annual subscriptions. So you can you know, do with that what you will. And then here we have the different categories for monthly subscriptions. So you can see, now a lot of these are pretty negligible differences. You know, 74 to 76%, 67 to 66, eh, pretty negligible. But then you got photo and video, that is pretty substantial difference. And I think that translates up here too. But anyway, just interesting information on renewal rates on monthly subscriptions, annual subscriptions in different app categories. SF Symbols 4 is now out of beta and it's officially released. So what's new in SF Symbols 4? By the way, this comes out with like every new like iOS or macOS version. So we're on SF Symbols 4. So there are uh, a thousand, over a thousand, I'm sorry, new symbols. You can see a little bit of them. I also saw on Twitter, uh, I guess there's a lot of car 
uh, SF symbols. So people are speculating, oh, is this Apple car or CarPlay stuff? But you can see new, new symbols include representations of home objects, fitness, health, currencies, and many more. Variable color, this is another nice new addition. So you can use them as like almost like progress bars or an audio wave like this as someone's talking. You can like actually animate the different bars so it looks like someone's talking or the alarm, it can look like it's shaking. So you can animate the different layers, if you will, of the SF symbol to show an animation to their user to give them some indication of like what's going on. So SF Symbols 4 out now. If you haven't upgraded from SF Symbols 3, go do it now. Moving on to the LOLs of the show, I like this one. Day one of me debugging the issue. I'm a fighter, I'm not a quitter. Day three of me debugging the issue. I am resigning. I guess you gotta know a little bit about UK politics and macroeconomics to understand what happened here and why she quit <laughs> so soon. But uh, yeah, that was funny. Just, yeah, when you're debugging the same thing for three days, you just wanna throw a computer through the wall. So, been there. And then finally from Decode Veronica here, uh, a friend learned COBOL and received a code base where the last change was done in the 90s by his mother. <laughs> That's not how inheritance is supposed to work in programming. Got a kick out of that one. Hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you next month.